I actually cannot believe it. In between the episodes, I've somehow managed to develop a cold. But I think it's to do with the fact that I'm actually top of the league and I've never really been this high up the league for a long time. And obviously, it's quite cold up here. But let's hope we can keep our place at the top of the league as we take on... Hold on, let me check my notes. Whole City away in the FA Cup. Okay, I didn't plan this. In the last episode, we took on Rotherham United, a team that were currently battling us for a promotion. And we beat them by a goal to nil as Alex Samuel scored uh, at the back post uh, to give us all three points. And uh, the form has been slightly erratic. I'm not going to... I'm not really going to dispute that. I mean, we are top of the league, but we are struggling a little bit now. Now, we start a recap with an away trip against Crew Alexandra and uh, Mikel Miller, who uh, won goal of the month in October, uh, which I mentioned in the last episode, uh, managed to score a goal on either side of halftime uh, to give a Crew a 5-3 win. I know, we lost 5-3 to Crew. Which sure one of their 17-year-olds be touted as one of the danger men. I didn't really take that into account. He scored a hat-trick against me. Of course he did. Could you not be yourself for five minutes? Centre-back Sean McLaughlin scored his first goal for the club as he scored the winner against Bradford City in the following game. In the local derby against MK Dons, Antif Tassong, we got sent off as we ended up drawing 0-0 against a team that are going to be battling relegation this season. In the following game, we took on bottom of the table Carlisle United at home and Bingham gave them the lead in the first half. Uh, but then Alex Samuel came off the bench uh, to equalise in the second half as we drew 1-1. And then our final game of the recap was against Shrewsbury Town away from home and Trevor Clark scored a pick of the goals with this brilliant strike on the edge of the box. And then Alex Samuel also got a brace as we ended up running out 4-0 winners. But as I have mentioned, we do take on Hull City, a team that are currently battling relegation from the championship in the FA Cup third round away from home. I mean, can you really call it a cup set if they're bottom of the league in their league and we're top of the league in our league and there's only one place separating us? Is that really a cup set? I'm not even sure why I'm calling it a cup set yet because I haven't even played Hull City and I don't know what the result is. So despite Liam Cullen being in and out of the team recently, because there have been a few players that are more informed than he is, uh, he's decided to drop his concerns about getting a new contract and he's quite happy with his current contract. It just sounds like to me, mate, you want to leave at the end of the season, which I can gladly make happen. Me and Steven Gerrard never seemed to get on in football manager because I remember in the Huddersfield save a couple of years ago when he was the Southampton manager, he said that I should be sacked and then he ended up losing his job instead. He's now slight bitching to me because Lars Dendonka, one of the loan signings I made from Brighton, uh, isn't playing at the moment because we are playing quite well without him. And now he's decided he's going to recall him from his loan spell in January when the window opens. I mean, Steven, it's not really going to affect my chances of getting promoted from this league. I only signed him because of his name because his older brother's doing really well in the Premier League. The 5-3 defeat against Crew, which saw 17-year-old score a hat-trick against my absolute fantastic defence, saw the end of our unbeaten run away from home, which has actually spanned to nine games. I mean, I couldn't believe that we've actually gone nine games without losing away from home. Until we lost to Crew, obviously. I mean, Crew have really put the screw in our title challenge, haven't they? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! We're also coming up to January transfer window time and I've realised that Josh Knight, who is by far my best player, uh, is currently wanted by Sheffield Wednesday. And uh, I mean, if they want to pay 1.5 million, which I've said is asking price to, they're more than welcome to. And if not, then they can fuck right off. The 1-0 win over Bradford City also saw Gareth Ainsworth return to the club that he once managed and that I unfortunately took over from him. And some Wickham fans out there might think that Gareth Ainsworth's football was a lot better than mine and he actually got more success on the pitch than I did. All I'm going to say is, did Gareth Ainsworth get Wickham to the top of League One and by the turn of the new year. Wait, he did? But where did they finish at the end of the season? Eighth. Well, that's not going to happen for me. George Moncur is also wanted by Doncaster Rovers because Doncaster Rovers have been beaten by us recently, so they clearly want some actual successful players in their squad. But to be honest, unlike Josh Knight, I mean, I don't really care if George Moncur leaves because he hasn't really hit the ground running at the club. And to be fair, if I do sell him, it means I'm going to have to update the thumbnail again. For those wondering if Noel Ennis has scored for me recently, he hasn't. He's now gone 16 hours without scoring. Who said to me that he was a good striker for this level? The mere mention of his name gets me mad. Snile, Lenny. <laughs> In other unrelated news, Portugal won the World Cup for the first ever time as they beat Brazil on penalties. And obviously, the World Cup's held in the winter this year because it's in Qatar. Uh, Portugal beat England in the semi finals, who ended up winning the third place playoff. And after the rousing success Gareth Southgate has brought to the nation by finishing fourth in the World Cup in Russia, uh, finishing third in the Nations League in 2019, I literally don't know how they did in the Euros in this game, and also finishing third in the World Cup in 2022, he then ended up resigning. I wonder how he's going to celebrate that incredible success. Mostly water and stuff like that. I also 
had a bit of strange success in the 1-1 draw against Carlisle United. Yeah, I know we drew them in the bottom of the league, but that wasn't the success I'm talking about. So we were losing 1-0 with 15 minutes left on the clock, and I decided to send on Alex Samuel uh, in place of one of our central midfielders. But then I somehow managed to mix them up and put the central midfielder up top and Alex Samuel in midfield. And of course, Samuel then ended up scoring, and then we ended up getting the 1-1 draw, and he got named in Team of the Week in central midfield. I mean, how does that work? And finally, for those who were wondering whether Gareth Southgate's replacement was an adequate replacement, uh, they have hired Jose Mourinho to take over the England team. I mean, that is the most obvious appointment that could have ever happened. Now, this is a team that I've decided to play against Hull City, and I've decided to change the formation. We've been playing 4-2-3-1 in the league recently, uh, but I think with Hull City being in a higher division than us, even though they're struggling, uh, it's time to change the formation. So we go with a 4-3-3, and Myerset keeps his place in goal with Trevor Clark, uh, Sean McLaughlin, uh, Josh Knight, and Ramsey being our back four. Adam Phillips will play in the Regista role ahead of the back four, with Sean Goss and George McCurr playing in the two central midfield spots. And E.K. Ogbo, Marcus Brown, and Nile Ennis will lead the line for us. I know, Nile Ennis hasn't scored for God knows how long, and I've put my faith in him to score against Hull City. This is clearly going to backfire. Okay, first things first. I mean, it is a big tie for us. You know, it's an FA Cup third round tie. We love the FA Cup third round ties at Wickham. See, I'm trying to remember. I don't think I've actually fallen at the first hurdle in any season that I've played the FA Cup with Wickham Wanderers. And by the way, Hull City are managed by Freddie Jungberg. Freddie Jungberg? Are you taking the mick out of me? A bloke whose managerial career was walking onto the pitch as an Arsenal manager and then walking straight back off it. Nice to see the whole fans are out in full force in their big clash against my Wickham side. We got the first chance of the game after four minutes as E.K. Ogbo flicked on a Camille Mizek's long ball forward and found Niall Ennis who ran through on goal but fired it straight at Christian Walton. I mean, did you expect anything else to happen? And then within the same highlight, George Moncur played the long ball forward and found Niall Ennis through on goal but he decided to lay his shot and then fired it at the keeper anyway. Great. Thanks, mate. Hull City did get a chance after 15 minutes as Lewis Coyles crossed and found James Scott at the back post, and he laid it off for Greg Doherty to fire straight at Camille Mizek, who pulled off a pretty good save, to be fair. And that exciting half of football came to a close as we were drawing 0-0 at half-time. I mean, I feel like it's been a long time since I said that. And within two minutes of the restart, Richie Smallwood played a ball over the top of our defence for James Scott to run onto, and he fired a good shot wide. I mean, that is quite troubling for us. About 10 minutes later, Sean Goss had a free kick from 30 yards out, but he fired it towards the top corner and Christian Walton was equal to it. With a couple of minutes left on the clock, Richie Smallwood played another long ball over the top and found Malik Wilkes, who was in behind our defence, uh, but then forced a great save from Camille Mizek again, who then kept us at 0-0. And that was it for the 90 minutes, which means in FA Cup rules, we have to go to extra time. I know, another 30 minutes of this absolute shit show. I can guarantee anyone who was watching Hull vs Wickham on any streaming platform has probably turned it off by now. We got the kick off into extra time and then it was half time. Yeah, not a single highlight in the first half of extra time. Good start. And then Hull kicked off for the second half of extra time, and there was still not a single highlight during extra time. Fantastic. Which meant for the first ever time in this series, we had to go to penalties. So James Scott stepped up first for Hull City to take their penalty, and Camille Mizek pulled off a fantastic save to give us an early advantage in the shootout. Alex Samuel then stepped up to take our first penalty and sent the keeper the wrong way as he fired it to give us a 1-0 lead in the shootout. But Malik Wilkes did the exact same thing as he sent Mizek the wrong way and uh, made it 1-1. So Daniel Nalondalu came off the bench during extra time, and I had the thought that he was going to take a penalty, and he put it away perfectly to give us a 2-1 lead. So Josh Gowen stepped up next for Hull City, but fired this penalty down the middle which Camille Mizek managed to push away and give us another advantage in the shootout which George Munker then stepped up and then fired the penalty straight at Christian Walton to ruin the advantage cheers George I mean he could fuck off to Doncaster for all I care Aaron Presley then stepped up to take Hull City's fourth penalty and fired it past Mizek Alex Patterson then stepped up for us to take our fourth penalty and fired it into the bottom right corner to give us the advantage again. Richie Smallwood had to score to keep Hull City in the game and he managed to do that as he dispatched the penalty into the bottom left corner past Mizek. And talking to Mizek, he's already saved two penalties so it was his turn to win us the shootout. I know, I gave my goalkeeper the fifth penalty in the shootout. That shows you what balls I have. And if he fucks this up, then we're in disaster mode. And of course he does it as he fired into the bottom left corner to send us into the FA Cup fourth round. You love to see it. Wait, hold on. I've just realised my goalkeeper's scored more goals than Noel Ennis in the last two months. What am I paying my strikers for? Feel the rush. 